crazy big news crazy amazing fantastic news for the one and only shane Gillis. how is that happening how did that happen huh how do you go from being fired before you even start your job at snl to now suddenly being hired as one of the hosts at snl fucking fantastic turnaround so most of you guys know um shane gillis um went through a bit of trouble a few years ago where he was he auditioned to be a cast member of snl and then um when it got announced he was hired um the internet cancel culture fucking mob specifically that guy oh wait yeah what happened to seth simons that was the one that cancelled shane wasn't it seth simons what the fuck happened to seth simons remember him he was on Twitter and he always used to try to cancel comedians and um, and tweet stuff that they said or clip stuff and whatever. That guy was fucking crazy. He was in, the, especially peak pandemic, he fucking hated stand-up comedians. He probably hated comedians more than, more than thingy, um, more than Red Bar. He was, a, Seth Simons was the original Red Bar. Seth Simons was Red Bar before Red Bar. You remember him? Seth Simons, Jake Flores, remember J fucking Jeff Flores? Do you remember? Jeff Flores, oh man. So anyway, um, what you call it? What? A Z. Read the article. Seth Simons writ in response to this, bro. Really? He wrote a response about. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll search it when I finish this. Then. Big up Chris Mack for that. I appreciate you, brother. So anyway, um, Shane Gillis got cancelled because they found this really racy joke that he said something about Asians. I think he used the term chink or something in there, right? And then everybody got mad, even though he was just repeating some anecdote of a story. And then he eventually got um, fired from SNL before he even got to, took the job. At the time, he was super bummed. This is the thing people don't remember. At the time, Shane Gillis was kind of bummed. I would say borderline depressed. I know now everything's worked out for him with my secret podcast um it's fucking killing it it's one of the highest earners if not the highest earner on P patreon he gets loads of you know he has loads of good episodes that get great numbers on youtube he's doing incredibly well he's part of rogan's crew but do you guys remember do you guys remember do you guys remember when he actually got fired from snl he was really down he was really down in the dumps um because it was one of his big breaks and obviously he got taken away from him and do you guys also remember this part of the law do you guys remember when all his friends, Ari Shafir, everybody else was trying to get him on Rogan and Rogan kept like ignoring him? Do you remember that? There was a period when he got fired from SNL and I think he even spoke about it himself. He thought he was going to get on Rogan straight away and Rogan kind of refused to have him on. Do you remember? He kept ignoring whenever, whenever they'd bring him up, whenever Ari would bring up Sh um, Shane's name, um, Joe kept Joe would pretend like he didn't hear it or something. Do you remember that? <laughs> and now all of a sudden, Shane is like one of Joe's good friends. You see how things change? I don't know. Again, Joe Rogan's a weird guy, man. The kind of people he kind of co-signs are the ones he kind of... You know, and then when Shane went on eventually to Rogan, it was a really awkward conversation too. He didn't really... He kind of bombed the first appearance Shane did on Rogan. He kind of bombed. Rogan didn't really like him too much. He kind of gave him the cold shoulder. He wouldn't let him joke. You know what I mean? It was really strange. But regardless, um, things have turned around for Shane Gillis. He's going to be performing on SNL as one of the hosts alongside 21 Savage, February 24th. 21 Savage is still performing on SNL even though he fucking scammed Aiden Ross the other day, which was fucking horrible. But um, I guess scammers always win. So big up 21 Savage. So this is a news confirmation courtesy of Variety. Let's read the article. It says SNL sets Shane Gillis as host after firing him for racist jokes in 2019. Um, let's read the article there. There's Shane Gillis there fucking grinning from ear to ear. Shane Gillis has been set as a host of the February 24th episode of, of Saturday Night Live, a controversial move as the comedian was cast and then swiftly cut from the late night sketch show in 2019. He'll be joining a musical guest, 21 Savage. I cannot wait, guys. I cannot wait for the podcast for the post snl podcast i cannot wait because i want to hear so much from shane what happens when he meets bo and yang for the first time after because i think bo and yang was another person that kind of got him cancelled after the whole like you know ching thing he wasn't happy with it i want to hear what shane gears has to say about how it was like meeting bo and yang <laughs> <laughs> now they got hired i want to know so badly how awkward that's going to be you get fired and you get hired as a host like how was Baron Yang? Was that frosty? Did he say hi? Like, <laughs> I would love to know. That's going to be a fucking amazing interaction between those two. Hours after Gillis was announced, SNL 
in 2019, videos resurfaced on social media that featured him making racist, homophobic, Islamophobic, misogynist. Look at all these things. I say these things on a daily basis, isn't it? That's how you can't become mainstream because people have so many fucking, they so fucking get their panties to twist over little jokes. Everything here is like a trigger, isn't it? Racist, homophobic, Islamophobic, misogynistic. Oh, Jesus. Um, jokes on his own podcast and other media. One week later, NBC cut him from the cast. The quote, after talking to Shane, we decided that it would not be joining SNL. Um, we want SNL to have a variety of voices and points of view within the show. And we hired Shane on the strength of his talents as a comedian and impressive, and impressive audition for SNL. We were not aware of his prior remarks that have resurfaced over the past few days. The language he used was, in, it was offensive, hurtful and unacceptable. We are sorry we did not see these clips honestly variety are doing a bit here in it imagine them quoting the entire thing in this article variety have some fucking shame are they trying to recancel him with this article why are they quoting the entire thing <laughs> they're just writing a summary they're quoting the entire thing of what snl said originally like relax bro snl probably needs a ratings anyway do you know what i mean like that's why they probably got him on board this it's a good little choice like fuck it um guinness was re has released also released a statement saying um oh no also released a statement at the time saying it feels ridiculous for comedians to be making serious public statements but here we are i'm a comedian who's funny enough to get snl that can't be taken away of course i wanted the opportunity to prove myself at snl but i understand it would be too much of a distraction i respect the decision they've made i'm honestly grateful for opportunity i'll always um i'll always a mad tv guy anyway that's a really good line at the end isn't it i was always a mad tv guy at the end anyway <laughs> <laughs> but yeah big up shane guinness amazing fucking turnaround that he's been able to get cast um or be a host at snl not even cast he's a host that's even a better prestigious role as being a cast member fucked up cast membership the fact that you're a host on snl and you get this iconic fucking uh post-it note thing uh on the chalk on the cork board um advert everyone gets when you're on there is the best validation ever way more than fucking getting cast as a cast member on there because who members who actually remembers the cast members on snl apart from the bait ones so the fact that he's made a big career for himself outside of that is fucking amazing one person who won't be happy one person who's not going to be happy that shane gillis got that fucking role or he's got that gig guess who's not going to be happy bitch you guessed it brendan papa Shaw. he is not going to be happy that shane gillis got that role because he's been wanting to get that role at snl for all his fucking life right that's the one thing he's always wanted brendan's always wanting to be on snl listen to this someone said when if would you rather win the super bowl be mvp yeah. or be on saturday night live i picked saturday night live <laughs> wow really? i just oh. But my 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 heart and my passion was Saturday Night Live. Mm. I was obsessed so with SNL. SNL. Robin, my mom would uh, every Saturday we watch SNL, and she always had me watch Robin Williams. So she loved comedy. She loved it. That's where I got my humor from. My, my, my mom always gravitated towards me doing, you know, uh, acting and uh, comedy, and uh, you know, Saturday Night Live was like our north star. Still is, still my golden host. Like that Saturday young, night. she was that young. It was Robin Williams. My heroes growing up were Jim Carrey, Adam Sandler, and then on. It's not the. Sorry, right. it's yeah. fine. I truly, I never like thought I'd get SNL or like wanted it. Right. So it wasn't like, oh, my dreams are destroyed. Right. Yeah. It was you a know? surprise. It was just like, oh, shit, nice. I got something. And they're like, no, you don't. I was like, all right. <clears throat> Back to what I was doing. Yeah, he kind of doubled down. If anything, he should, I, and I've said this from the jump, he should have been fired for having a bad podcast. The problem is it wasn't funny, and it was like reckless, and I get it just wasn't funny. But I that was the problem with that, where you don't see like very many good comedians defending him, because A, it's not funny. Yeah. <laughs> Someone said when honestly honestly big up the friend the kid guy who put this together absolutely brilliant fucking video absolutely incredible compilation but can you imagine the lack of self-awareness you'd have to have to be brendan shaw where you're struggling to put together a decent 30 minute special but you have aspirations to host snl i'm not somebody to tell people to like stay in their lane 
or to like you know um uh, limit their ambitions but surely maybe address the thing right in front of you first maybe try to make sure you have a good 30 minutes you have a good hour under your belt before you start aiming for those type of things right maybe let's not aim for the moon let's maybe aim for the stars as brendan would say right? <laughs> let's maybe aim for like getting a decent 20 minute special under our belt let alone 30 before we start thinking of fucking snl honestly he was thinking of snl so long ago and he actually and i think it's for him mostly i guess the snl thing was mostly just a a clout thing right like it was something to tick off when you're in la you kind of everyone's talking about snl it's one of those things that you do and it's like good validation that makes you look like you're on your way to international stardom but it's not really about the jokes or the funny it's just about having it be a thing um i do actually think that oddly enough if you got the gig at snl I think it would be one of the funniest things ever. I think that would break the internet. I'm not going to lie. If Brendan was actually given the opportunity or cast, or sorry, as uh, booked as a host or SNL, I think that would break the internet. That would go crazy. That would go super viral if you saw Brendan Schwab's name on one of those fucking post-its. <laughs> it would be fucking incredible. I'd be so here for it. I would be tuned in. I'd be locked in. I would pay so much money to see Brendan try to read lines off a fucking teleprompter, right? Even even that intro thing that they do, right? The intro where they fucking um, read the, 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 hey, I'm Brendan Shaw. Da, da, da. Imagine how many takes they'd have to do. I'd, I'd kill to watch the fucking, um, you know, all the takes that he had to do, try to read lines off of a certain sketch. It'd be so funny to hear him try and, to hear him mumble, mumble, marble, marble mouth his way through a fucking monologue or something imagine imagine Brendan Shaw's monologue he comes out in his skinny jeans and his Jordans what's up New York <laughs> what's up New York City <laughs> in his little skinny jeans and his Jordans <laughs> and that moustache right with his moustache like that with his moustache like this right what's up New York City <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> i'd pay good money to see him i would love it man honestly i wish i wish it happens i really do wish for his sake it happens because do you guys remember this part of the law do you guys remember the part of the law where brennan was was pretending to be a comedian like he was building up his like lie doing his fucking um imagined nostalgia about growing up on stand-up comedy and i think he bought that book do you remember that book I, I think it came out a while ago it's like a coffee table book about snl and all the history of snl do you guys remember that it came out a few years ago um they brought out this amazing book basically detailing the history of snl how it started all the amazing people that came from there blah 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 and it was, i think it was one of the only books he read so he kept talking about it every fucking podcast. It was one of the things that was a constant topic. Um, so that's a bit of like deep cut T Fat K law. Where I remember he just wouldn't shut up about that book because the only book he probably read in fucking ten years. So yeah, that was a funny period of time where he was pretending that I didn't really want to play football. I always wanted to be a comedian. It's like, bro, come on, come on, really? You want to be a comedian, really? It's like, come on, man. Oh, I fucking loved it. But yeah, um, congratulations to fucking Shane Gillis. Honestly, an absolutely amazing turnaround. The fact that this happened the way it happened is fucking incredible to see. Um, hopefully, um, he absolutely smashes it. I think he will, um, especially when you consider all the other sketches that he does. I forgot the name of it, the, what he does as well. He does little sketch shows on his fucking YouTube channel that were fucking great. That I remember watching during the pandemic that were really awesome. He's actually a really good comedic actor. I'm not going to lie. Um, so... I don't think he won't do a good job, but it'll be interesting to see how his sense of humor marries up with all those kind of quote unquote woke comedians on um, SNL. I really, really wonder how they kind of blend because I feel like um, a lot of the, I get the feeling with SNL, a lot of the great jokes don't make it on camera. You know, that's the thing. I get a lot. I think a lot of the great jokes don't make it on camera because they're probably a little bit too racy. They don't want to get cancelled. So we might not see the best version of him on camera, but I still think it's a win regardless. Because, and also, I hope what this does actually, I don't think it's possible, 
But I hope this fucking stops all these comedians talking about fucking council culture and fucking nonsense about that. Like, it, it, council culture doesn't exist. It's not real. Um, for the most part, it actually makes you more famous. Um, these comedians like to go on as if, like, they're being silenced and people are stopping them from saying certain things and the world is out. It's like, no, bro. If you're funny, if people like you, eventually you'll fucking pick it back up again where you started off from. If anything, it'll probably make you way, way more um, well-known um, if it doesn't, then you're probably never destined to be funny anyway. But this whole like hacky thing of using council culture to kind of get your name out there is fucking lame. Um, hope that does happen. But regardless, um, big up fucking Shane Gillis. Absolutely love it. Can't wait to see him on there. I actually probably watch that live. I'm not going to lie. I'm actually, if I can, I don't know how to watch that live. I think I could probably live stream it probably somewhere. There'll definitely be a, a, li a legal live stream. I could probably check it out on, but I'll definitely watch that live. Or if anything, I'll probably um, rip the whole entire thing on pir or pirate the whole thing um from a torrent site or something the next day and probably try and do a reaction for it and maybe uh because i can't put that up on fucking youtube so i'll probably have to upload it on fucking um patreon so i'll definitely be checking it out can't wait to see what that's like um seeing him fucking do some comedy acting alongside of alongside what's his name alongside uh 21 savage is going to be fucking hilarious but i'm really am here for it i really really am here for it i cannot wait to see more of it when it does eventually happen i cannot wait to see more of it when it does eventually happen